Hi everyone. We might all soon have access to artificial general intelligence, or AGI, but can we trust every individual in society with the immense power of AGI? How must nations and governments evolve to handle this new reality? Keep watching to learn more. This video has three parts. Can individuals handle AGI? The role of the state? And new paradigms for society? And don't worry, I brought the hats back. Part 1. Can individuals handle AGI? There are two main classes of problems that I worry about, at least when talking about AI safety. The first is that AI can go rogue. It can essentially start acting of its own volition, and that may not include humanity's best interests. And also, AI can enhance the capabilities of people acting with bad intent. In this video, we focus on the second of those problems. How do you prevent ordinary human actors from doing really bad things when they have access to AI? We want to preserve the peace and have a lawful society. We want order rather than chaos. Let's start by talking about the effects of AI at an individual level. At different points throughout history, there have been various different notions of how much responsibility an individual needs to take when worrying about their own safety. Many thousands of years ago, each person would be responsible for their own safety. And you might try to associate with a tribe or a kingdom that you could rely on to support you when you were in a pinch. Throughout the Middle Ages, one of the primary purposes of kings and nobility is that they took responsibility for the safety of their subjects. So they would often be called upon to wage war. This sense of responsibility went on for a really long time. In England, for example, gentlemen would be fighting duels to the death as recently as 1852, which was when the last recorded death in a duel happened. Apparently, having access to swords was all about wanting to duel someone. So when people stopped wanting to duel each other, then the need for swords was kind of just dying out naturally. Over in Japan, samurai were carrying swords well into the mid-1800s as well. The samurai would swear allegiance to a leader and then would start to take responsibility for the security of that group. None of this was about increasing the overall safety of society, which is, for example, what Americans always say when they want to carry guns. In England and Japan, safety was assigned to a very specific set of individuals that were trained in the arts of war. And if security was coming from somewhere else, then maybe those professions and practices wouldn't be necessary. Let's talk about other weapons. Depending on your society, it might be more or less acceptable to carry weapons in public. For example, assault rifles. Again, unless maybe you live in certain parts of the United States. But that aside, the more powerful the weapon is, the less likely it is to be acceptable to be seen carrying one around. While some people might carry around assault rifles, nobody carries around pocket nukes. Why is this? It's because the possible damage from a bad actor having access to such a weapon is so astronomically large that it's a lot more reasonable to ban people from having them entirely. The ability to cause destruction at that scale is reserved for nation states but we'll talk more about that in the next section. Turning to AGI for a minute, AGI shares certain characteristics with these various classes of weapons that we were talking about that are trying to ensure personal safety. For example, AGI, or even just AI today, can certainly be used to create false information to persuade people of things that are not true. In other words, they can increase the capabilities of malicious people to do harm. AGI specifically can act as a human, but much, much faster. It doesn't take that long for an AI model to think. An AGI system is probably also very easy to replicate and probably also very easy to have bypass morals if current alignment efforts are anything to judge by. For example, a spammer could use an AGI system to create fake but very realistic sounding phone calls. And once they nail down the formula, they can just replicate that 10,000 times and run it in parallel. So again, the potential fallout from someone misusing an AGI system seems to be quite large and very scalable, unfortunately. So the question is, really, can society afford to give AGI to everyone? If we're going to do that, I think one of the following four statements has to be true. Either we can create a safe version of the model through RLHF or some other mechanism, which is an active area of research, but so far looks very challenging. Or second, maybe the AGI's actions could be regulated through a central resource, for example, which might start to look pretty totalitarian depending on how it's implemented. Or the possible damage from any actor misusing the system is acceptable and correctable. Which, again, is it acceptable to carry around a pocket nuke? Who knows? 
Or lastly, the general public's access to AGI could be severely restricted. But unfortunately, there are plenty of open source models out there that would make this option pretty hard to implement. In my opinion, with current technology, our best bet is to tie any AI actions to a human moral agent. There's always a human responsible for anything that an AI does, in other words. But this still means that any possible damage done by one actor has to be acceptable to society. We have to be able to survive that and move on. But to achieve that, I think we have to talk more about what the government would be doing in all of this. Part two, the role of the state. In recent history, states or countries have had a monopoly on using arbitrary force. You have police to maintain the internal stability within a country, so any citizens that get out of line can be dealt with. And you also have the military, which maintains a balance of power with other nations. Although sometimes alliances with other nations would be necessary to achieve security. Although countries always try to put checks and balances to ensure that moral actions are done, generally speaking, if there's an advantage, the nations will go and take it. Think about what was happening prior to World War I, for example. European colonial powers were just going out and grabbing as much land as they could hold on to. And there'd be recurring wars between the powers and their subject states, as well as between the powers themselves. Once technology advanced to the point where World War I or World War II really engulfed the whole planet, and so many lives were lost. And then after World War II, we had something different. While countries would still try to maintain a military to achieve balance of power with other nations, you had a bipolar world. The US and the USSR were both extremely powerful, so as long as a country could secure an alliance with one or the other, they'd probably be fine. And between the two superpowers themselves, well, they had invented nuclear weapons. And in the nuclear era, we had mutually assured destruction. The weapons got so powerful that it wasn't really possible to use them anymore. The same way that really powerful rifles might be banned from individuals because they can actually kill a large portion of the population, states had to essentially agree not to use these nuclear weapons. But there was no higher authority over states. So they went with, look, I have so many weapons that you don't dare attack me, and vice versa. The point was really to make a first strike impossible, because there would be a lot of retaliation. In my mind, AI will grant similar capabilities to nation states. In some scenarios, they could represent a weapon so powerful that you dare not use it, at least in theory, because the problem is that an AI strike might be powerful enough to be a true first strike that takes out the opponent's capability to respond. Because of the huge range of possibilities that an offensive AI system might leverage, it's really, really difficult to imagine building effective defensive AIs. Though that is an active area of research, with my security background, I just know that they have a huge uphill battle to fight. Going back to nuclear weapons, the US tried to create a missile defense program at some point called SDI. They wanted to be able to shoot down incoming Soviet missiles Missiles, but it proved to be too difficult, even if they had satellites pre-positioned over the USSR, ready to shoot down the missiles as soon as they were launched, because attack is way easier than defense. So at first, individuals and groups would ensure their security by actually having military power themselves, or by developing alliances with someone who did have a strong military. That would lead to frequent clashes as countries would actually use their militaries, because why not? They have it there, sitting in reserve, to actually test their strength against opponents. Then when new nuclear weapons were developed, the idea became to avoid any conflict entirely because it could destroy humanity. Now we're actually in a third era, the cyber era. Nation states invest a lot of money into building cyber attacks and cyber defenses, although they're very secretive about it. And the thing about a cyber attack is that it's very difficult to attribute it to a specific actor. So it's really hard for a government or for anyone to point the finger and say, you were responsible for this attack. They might have strong suspicions, but it's not quite the same thing as saying, look, this city was destroyed. So in cyberspace, it's not really possible to retaliate in the same way that it would be with conventional or nuclear weapons. That makes cyber attacks a sort of soft attack because they don't have such severe consequences, which means, of course, that less scrupulous nations, or maybe just all nations, I don't know, go about cyber attacks all the time. And it's just a soft attack. It doesn't really make the news until it shuts down a pipeline or something. Because yes, cyber attacks can get tied to hard assets, like military, economic, or public services. And that's when you could imagine retaliation starting to happen again, because you could retaliate with conventional weaponry or another cyber attack or whatever. 
we might try to tie AI to hard assets as well. We could tie AI to human moral agency, like I mentioned before, or to hard assets, like where it's operating or what it's responsible for. It's not really clear that that would help though, because regulating cyberspace between nations hasn't really gone on very well so far. Nations that are in a weaker geopolitical position find it advantageous to allow cyber attacks to occur from their soil. They turn a blind eye basically. And because of this attribution problem, there's no incentive, there's no international pressure for them to do otherwise. So unfortunately, I think when you introduce AI to this cyberspace world, AI is going to start getting used very frequently in offensive ways. And although nuclear weapons built a temporary ceasefire between the powerful nations, there's still no higher authority that they can appeal to to introduce laws and regulations that might keep cyber attacks and AI driven cyber attacks under control. So we went from I'll carry a knife slash my friend carries a knife to oh, all of our weapons are super powerful, let's not attack anyone, to, oh, we have these soft cyber weapons. We can just use them all the time as long as we don't blow up any bridges. And yes, those all sound silly, but those are the pillars, the paradigms on which society has been built on over the ages. And for AI, I think we need a new paradigm. Part three, new paradigms for society. As we discussed earlier, the ultimate problem with having humans with really powerful AI is that those humans can use that power to malicious ends. The standard solution of, well, introduce the laws, let people run around, if they break the laws, punish them appropriately, and society as a whole will survive, well, that doesn't work anymore. The cost of false negatives is too high. The first time someone severely abuses a powerful AI, like an AGI system, the amount of damage done could level a city. It could be similar similar to a shooting war, or it could even make humanity extinct for all we know. So you simply can't let it happen. Remember, when a gun gets powerful enough, people are simply banned from possessing it. But can we actually do this with AI? Can we reduce its capabilities to make something that's actually safe? Will open source models bypass any attempt to do this by providing an easy alternative that's just as powerful as the state of the art? Again, if individuals have access to such powerful AI, they could use it to seize immense political power or kill a lot of people or carry out actions that society can't recover from. Beyond the individual level though, this type of AI really upsets the balance of power between nation states. Conventional military strength is upended. There are plenty of guerrilla tactics that you can execute from cyberspace, especially if you have an artificial mind controlling them. It turns out that mutually assured destruction is built on quicksand if you can just throw millions of tiny darts at somebody and they can't even tell who threw them. In my mind, it's arguably a smoother path to human extinction than having lots of nuclear warheads lying around because AI-based weaponry could be devastatingly effective. It can leverage all the capabilities of cyberspace, it can leverage all the capabilities of nuclear weapons, and it can outthink human controllers and it can do it so quickly that it would be very difficult to respond. All is not doomed and gloom, however, I do have a couple of proposed solutions to these issues or ways in which this tension might get resolved. The first is unexpected advances in AI safety. That might happen, of course. For example, AIs developing consciousness or a really strong basis of morality, perhaps by having lots of experience operating as an agent in the real world to develop an understanding of all the consequences of certain actions. I don't know how likely this scenario is, but I do know that capabilities research is so far outpacing safety research. So we should really get on that if we want this to happen. Something else that might happen is totalitarian control over the models. Remember, even if we make AI safe enough that it doesn't harm humanity as a whole, we're talking about human misuse of models in this video. And how can an AI figure out whether a user request is reasonable or not when it doesn't have the full context, especially if that user has access to the full weights of the model as well. It would be pretty easy to bypass any restrictions that might have been put into place if they're not deep ones. So it might turn out that the only way to ensure this is to keep a tight lockdown on all model distribution in the world. Who exactly would keep that lockdown well, I don't know, but another third option is a singular world government could form. There are a lot of advantages here. You don't have to maintain the balance of power between states, and you can enforce restrictions on individuals, such as what they can and can't use models for. And yes, I agree, this seems extremely unlikely to happen, but remember as well that AI is probably going to help deal with a lot of the scarcity that we currently struggle with. That might mean that greater coordination amongst the world as a whole starts to become possible. Perhaps 
not an actual world government, but something like a stronger version of the United Nations, which, after all, is sort of what the United Nations was designed to do. Another option is that humans merge with machines. The reason this helps is that if humans start thinking faster and faster, just like AIs, then humans can actually help intervene when someone is using an AI for bad purposes. This is actually one of the most reasonable solutions, but it requires really good brain-computer interfaces, which we are developing, but we don't have right now. And the transition period between now and when you actually have good brain-computer interfaces could be long enough that this solution doesn't kick in until it's too late. And I guess another option is we welcome our AI overlords. I mean, if we don't do anything, we're basically rolling the cosmic dice, so that's probably what's going to happen. If you have any other ideas about how this dilemma with individuals having two powerful models could actually be resolved, do let me know down in the comments. And if you have other thoughts about the impact on geopolitics or society and government, I would be especially interested to hear them. Finally, in conclusion, we talked about two main problems. First, what would happen if every individual in society had access to AGI? And it turns out that that would probably be far too dangerous to let happen, even though individuals have historically carried around lots of items that help them ensure their own safety. Once those items get too powerful, not a good idea to let anyone carry them around. And secondly, we talked about the impact that AI will have on the fragile balance of power between nation states. That power has been based on buildup of military strength over the centuries until the devastation of worldwide wars and the invention of nuclear weapons created a sort of fragile peace in the Cold War between the US and the USSR. Attacks in cyberspace were starting to erode that simple clear delineation that was preventing war. And now you have AI being thrown on top of all of that, and it really destabilizes the ability of nations to ensure that their strength is such that they can be confident in their security. We proposed a couple of new paradigms for society, rather tongue in cheek, including a world government and having humans merge with machines. I did less research for this video than usual, and it's mostly just my own thoughts. So let me know if I missed anything or if you have ideas to add on. If you're able, I would greatly appreciate your support on Patreon, and also make sure to join my Discord where we have pretty frequent voice calls to discuss topics related to AI. If you liked this video, check out this previous one I made about the impact that AI is having on China's power in the geopolitical landscape. Reading about great power politics is always simultaneously interesting and very frustrating, but I hope you will enjoy the video. Join the Discord. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.